So it's no secret that United need a centre forward, with Anthony Martial really being United's only high level viable option, with Rashford definitely being much better from the left, as I said in my analysis video of him which will be linked below along with some of my other videos as well. And a player who has really come to prominence firstly this season in the Eredivisie and then secondly in the World Cup in Qatar is Cody Gakpo. A quick profile of Gakpo, he's around 6'3", 6'4", in height and unlike most tall forwards he's incredibly mobile and quick and seems like a hybrid of a winger and a centre forward together. But before I go any further, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Private Internet Access. Private Internet Access hides your IP address and encrypts your internet connection. It works with all major streaming services, including BBC iPlayer and ITV, from wherever you are in the world. I'm currently in Spain and so I cannot watch those channels, however with private internet access I can with the click of a button, setting my location to the UK from where I can then watch the World Cup matches completely for free with perfect quality. And so private internet access has become essential for me during this World Cup. Private internet access is offering Atlantis football subscribers 4 extra months completely free when you sign up for a 2 year deal, that's 4 completely free extra months on a 2 year deal, so even after the World Cup you can still enjoy all the benefits that come with private internet access and save money at the same time. The link will be left in the description below for you to get private internet access now and of course a big thank you to private internet access for sponsoring today's video, a link will be left in both the description and the comment section below for you to click at the end of this video. Before any analysis if we look at Gakpo's FB ref report we can already get a glimpse into his ability. He ranks in the 97th percentile or higher for his non-penalty goals and his non-penalty xg, was also overperforming his non-penalty xg by 0.16 per 90, ranking it in the 95th percentile for that stat, alongside his XG assisted which sits in the 99th percentile, and his dribbles completed which sit in the mid 90s. This is over the last 365 days where he's played just over 2,700 minutes for PSV, and a large percentage of those minutes are obviously coming in the Eredivisie, so that does have to be taken into account, as obviously putting up those numbers whilst in La Liga, Syria or the Premier League is a completely different kettle of fish. If I had to compare Gakpo to any player past or present, it would actually be Kaka. As like the Brazilian did, Gakpo has a tall lanky frame but accelerates like a 400 meter runner, able to drive past defenders at will, and so Gakpo is a valuable asset when it comes to progressing the ball up the pitch at speed, but he can also create chances around the box, and is now burdening on being a top level finisher in and around the box as well. Prior to this season, I think Gakpo was exclusively seen as a left sided inside forward, who functions best in a front three as he does for PS3. However, after seeing him utilise more in a central role for the Netherlands in Van Hull's 5-2-3 system, where he plays more like a centre forward at times, I do think we could see Gakpo utilised in a central position, becoming more of a striker than an attacking midfielder as his career goes on. And this is because he seems to have developed into the profile of a creative number 9. Against Qatar, we saw Gakpo link with Memphis and Klaassen in a congested central area, with a fantastic first time flick into Klaassen, facilitating the 1-2 before receiving the ball back and driving into a central shooting position on the edge of the box and his low finish into the bottom right corner finished a sequence that was very Karim Benzema like in its nature. He also did a similar thing against Ecuador in the previous group stage game. The Netherlands would win the ball high up the pitch and immediately after Klaassen receives the ball you can see Gakpo's confidence and decisiveness demanding the ball from Klaassen and knowing exactly where the space is going back across Klaassen and despite it being on his so called weaker left foot from a pretty difficult shooting position position, Gakpo releases a venomous left footed strike which beats the keeper at his near post just with its pure power alone. His goal in the opening group stage game against Senegal however showed a completely different skill set and a skill set that lends itself very much to being a main centre forward in the team. As De Jong receives the ball on the left side, Gakpo after finding himself out on the right is immediately looking to make a run into a central goal scoring position and with the goal scoring instinct of a top level striker he makes a darting run in behind from the right side side and is able to use his tall frame and spring to get ahead of the Senegal keeper to head the Netherlands into the lead. This season in the Eredivisie, Gakpo is leading the way as the league's best player, having a total of 21 goal contributions in 14 games, with 9 of those being goals and 11 being assists. He's also hit 3 goals and 2 assists in 5 Europa League games, so we can see that Gakpo has 
both style and substance, but would he be the right player for Ten Hag in this United side? Well, we know that United now are pretty much stacked with wide attacking talents, such as Rashford, Garnacho, Anthony and Sancho. However, at the moment, none of those what I would consider top level players, and all could be improved, particularly if a player like Gakpo was on the market. But United also need a centre forward, as Martial really is Ten Hag's only viable option there. And as I alluded to earlier on, I do think that Gakpo can make that transition from wide attacker to centre forward, becoming a Trequatista type, who is given the freedom to roam from an advanced central position, playing almost as a fourth attacking midfielder at times. When needed, he can hold a central position ahead of Bruno Fernandes, but when the space is there between the lines, Gakpo can drop off in behind the opposition's midfield to receive the ball, as well as floating out to the left when the space is created, which may come from or allow Marcus Rashford to make those diagonal central runs from out to in. We do see Martial provide this type of fluidity alongside the three behind him, and I think Gakpo would take this to another level. And with him in the attack, United would have Fernandes and Gakpo, who are top level chance creators, was also having Anthony and Rashford alongside those two, with all having the clinical finishing ability needed from a variety of different positions. And this is what attracts me so much to Gakpo as a potential United sign in the sheer variety in his finishing, being able to shoot across goal or with power at his near post, with either foot from a few different angles, was also also providing the aerial offensive ability that will give United a target from crossing positions. At the moment, Gakpo is one of the most complete forwards in the game, along with players like Kylian Mbappe, Christopher Nkunku and Raphael Liao. All of those three, as well as Gakpo, are forwards who have the dribbling ability to carry the ball up the pitch at speed and unlock a defence by wriggling through players around the box in congested areas, whilst they all also provide high chance creating output and can get into and score from shooting positions themselves. And that's really what separates top level attackers from what I like to refer to as clutch players. Players who win big games by turning up in big moments, creating something out of nothing which is a difference at the top level. Think about Mbappe in both legs against Real Madrid last season in the Champions League or Haaland in the Manchester derby, able to score a hat-trick and take the game away from Ten Hag's side. Messi and Ronaldo have done it consistently over the last decade and a half but now United need to be looking for their own clutch player. City have it in Haaland, PSG have Mbappe, but Barcelona have Lewandowski and Real Madrid have Vinicius who looks like he will transition into this sort of player as well as having players like Karim Benzema and Luka Modric still in their squad as well. And Cody Gakpo who I think could probably be available for around 50 to 60 million would definitely be my main centre forward target for United either in January or in the summer as I could see Ten Hag deploying him in a similar sort of role to how he used Dusan Tadic at Ajax and given that Gakpo is still only 23 years old and a player who I think can explode into a world class talent in the next few years, bringing him to Old Trafford seems like a no-brainer to me.